Ash at the analyst desk. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Not as quick of a game as we've uh, come to expect from Immortals. 37 minutes, though, still coming in at a decent time. I want to touch on something uh, that we talked about at the beginning of the day, though. Champion picks in the top lane. How the prevalence of tanks would uh, affect players like Huni and Darshan, who we've come to know as guys who are willing to pick the Quinn, the Fiora, the, these more carry-like champions. Coming out with a GP here uh, in this game, what are our thoughts on that champion, especially given that he was one of the champions directly nerfed? Uh, I think that they picked the GP because Quinn was banned by energy, and Quinn is one of the hardest counters to GP in the meta at the moment. Mm -hmm. And picking a tank into GP doesn't really matter too much because he's got armor penetration on his barrels, right? And then they just play and stall for the late game, and the whole composition actually made sense for Immortals. Uh, and this is one of the situations that you can pick GP into and not really have to fear too much. There's things like Ramus that you can play in the top lane that we aren't seeing today just yet, maybe. But mm -hmm. Nautilus went completely unpicked or banned last game, and this game did end up on that list. So we're seeing some teams with varying degrees of adaptability to what's happening in the top lane. But this is an example of you're playing around that pick, so it works. On the flip side, we see the Poppy and the Sivir locked in. Uh, I bring up the, the Poppy because Impact was, we had that video clip of him saying, play the tanks. The mm -hmm. tanks can, you can win around the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. And Sivir is a champion that Jat mentioned. Altic has had a lot of success on in the past on gravity. However, against a team like Corky, Gragas, who are happy to sit back, it f didn't feel as though the Sivir provided enough engage for them with a, po with a Poppy for them to actually really start those fights when they needed to. Yeah, I think Sivir is definitely back in a big way uh, and definitely good in uh, compositions like that. Um, but definitely the actual execution there, uh, there were a couple of hiccups. You saw it actually have success there in the mid game around that one fight where energy did win even when behind. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see the strong points and the ricochet being able to crit is a very big deal, uh, especially for those mid and late game team fights. Um, but as I really do like the Immortals comp, I kind of want to mm -hmm. come back to yeah, that absolutely. because they run Soraka so often that people are always kind of like, oh, they don't really have a front line. You only need one tank with Soraka. And they had that one tank. Rainover went pure tank, Rek'Sai, and even Rush Distortion uh, for his boots so that Mark they actually they they had, had engage. They had engage. It's a Rek'Sai on Distortion Flash right. being able to get multiple really big knockouts for the team. So like they have their tank. When you're running Soraka, what you want is not more tanks. What you want are more threats so that the enemy can't focus on Soraka because you yep. have so many threats dealing all this damage. Gotcha. It's very hard to get to the backline and kill this rock. Smart drafting by Immortals. Now let's get into the game. First replay I want to take a look at is actually uh, turning a bit of a critical eye towards the solo laners of energy because throughout the season we have been somewhat critical of, for example, Moon, Kong Quan, even Alltech at times, the newer guys in the LCS. Here's an example though where we could look for energy's solo laners, the veterans, to step up their play. Zyrene. GBM wanted to hit Adrian there. And then he went for Huni instead of Pobelter when Altec was still in range to follow up. So maybe the damage would have been enough to actually kill Pobelter there. He did have cleanse. And then Impact, this just seems like overcompensation. Like, they're at tier two. Soraka is a thing. As well as oranges uh, on GP. You and see then, the GP pops I mean, the orange immediately. Turtle like, still had heal. Yeah, so exhaust. The AD carry heal comes in. Like, um, he just had no backup there, but his eyes got really big because he saw so many low health targets. Yeah, that, that seems like one of those situations where you're saying, you know, not enough is going right for us and right. I have to do something. And it's really forced. Exactly. So, you know, again, it's just kind of an example of where this team as a whole, whether or not that's communication uh, issues to begin with or what, but everyone on that team has a, an area in which they can level up to become more successful. Now let's jump ahead 25 minutes into the game off the back end of a pick by Energy where they finally do successfully use TF to pick somebody off. Immortals, they turn around. Rek'Sai coming up huge with the GP to turn a 4v5 and net them the Baron. We'll get that up on your screen. I'm going to let Kobe walk us through this one. Yeah, we're going to see the uh, Rek'Sai distortion flash in action here because this is going to be Immortals turning it around without the Soraka. This is a 4 versus 5, but they get the perfect setup. Gangplank ultimate in a choke into rain over flash ulting 3. And if it wasn't for Impact here getting a great Poppy ultimate to eject two members, it would have been a clean sweep for Immortals there. And then here, uh, the heal from Turtle allows him to stay away uh, alive a little bit longer and continue this chase with Rainover uh, ulting back in. Um, Pobelter there, 
backed off a little bit and dodged, um, which might have been able to be just avoided. Just in case you want yeah. to see it again. There's, we liked it so much. Just in the case you want to see it again. Throw, 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 <laughs> actually, some something in there for you. Get a little more, a little more action for you guys. Yeah. No, but it really yeah. it does it does point to that's probably Immortal's greatest strength, and, and Jat touched on it, is their ability to make split-second decisions yes. as compared to any other team yes. where they can turn 4v5s. I don't want to call Immortals SKT, but it's an attribute. <laughs> no, but it's an attribute of SKT that we've talked about. That that is a team that throughout all of this last uh, season, we constantly look out and say, "How are they winning four v five fights? How are they winning these four v five fights?" It's because they operate so in sync with each other. And I'm not saying that they are the same team, but it's a like yeah. quality. I definitely think that that is true about this squad. I think they're all on the same page. I think they mesh very well in terms of personalities. And when I've talked to their coach, Dylan, and I've asked him, you know, when your team actually gets behind in some of these games we've been seeing lately, do you get nervous? And he's like, I don't really get nervous no. because I know that even if we're down 5,000 gold, we'll still be able to team fight. Huni and Rainover are really good at picking the fights and knowing which ones to take. Now, before we get out of this, I want to take another look at the strength of schedule graphics that we were taking a look at earlier in the day. This is going to be the bottom half of the playoff bracket. And uh, please note that Energy did just lose a game. So this record was reflecting the beginning of the day, all these records across the board. But essentially here, it it showcases the the kind yeah. of uh, record that energy is going to have to go up against in these last four yeah, games. Yeah, this graphic a little bit more interesting than the one that we showed at the opening of the day because these are two ties. These are really, really close, uh, basically neck and neck right here. And in the Liquid Energy team, as you said, energy just did lo lose a game. Plus, uh, Liquid, in that sort of tie that they have going with energy, uh, which has been broken now, um, they do also have the advantage of when we last saw them in week seven, both of those teams played Team Impulse. Energy lost to them, mm. but Liquid won. So yep. I think Liquid are the team on the rise right now. They have uh, the moment momentum, um, and they do have, uh, they're, yeah, they are looking better. They're posed to break into the top. Right. Yeah. And if you look at the Echo Fox squad, they actually play two teams below them in the standings and could actually win those games and catch Energy because Energy play four of the top six teams and Echo Fox could actually have a tiebreaker against Energy because they're 1-1, one -one, I believe. Yeah, so things are looking up for Echo Fox in terms of their race for a playoff spot. Energy yeah. definitely has the hardest road to uh, to hold on to spot, that yeah. to hold on to that spot and then when it comes to the liquid energy uh point liquid beat energy the last time they played they will have to play one more time so that head-to-head -head could come into play mm -hmm. as well coming up next though see if counter logic gaming can get another win and earn a killing spree or if liquid will get a shutdown stick around we'll be right back Kills going down, that's Conquan in. Turtle's got a great position, gets gold carded, but makes the distance to keep himself alive. Is that enough to win this fight? Shots coming out from Pobelter. Wild cards are just that, and you can't always dodge them. Rainover stepping forward, that's a huge pileup, and he gets three! That's a, oh my god, the damage coming in! Turtle's light across the board, Pobelter as well. Oh, oh yeah. they're right in it, Altec's forced to get out of that one. He throws the alt and the flash down, Pobelter's knocked up, but it's always in and out, not one member of Immortals has died yet. They take the damage. 20 to 10 and a 15,000 gold lead. Immortals takes down energy.